Now, like what Brian just mentioned, we're able to split into two teams now, which is gonna give us our production. We have to get moving here. And then from there, it's all that finish work, but we can't get there until we get here. Now, what I love about this section here, and this was done intentionally, this big guy sticks above the water by about that much. I think water comes someplace up right in here, but we wanted that to happen. So as water comes out of this waterfall, that rock really helps push that water this way and back into our intake bay. What we don't want to have happening is the water that comes from our stream and our jets and everything over there and the water that comes this way collide and then confuse the acorns and the leaves and everything on where to go. You know, and honestly, there's really nothing worse than a confused acorn. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Okay, we finished pretty strong end of day two yesterday, right? Brian's like feeling so good about himself, he put a, a kid's medium shirt on. <laughs> So it feels like we didn't get a lot done yesterday because there's really not a lot of rocks in the pond, but just getting this liner in and getting the whole thing shaped out and getting the base for that wall was huge. Yeah. That's huge because now they can just fly through that. And we say that, but we know things are going to get held up a little bit because we're going to start wanting to drop boulders in it yeah. and cutting stuff around it. But it, at least the base is done and we can get going. I love your plan of just rocking in that deep section over there just before the intake bay. And we have to do that so that wall can get carried into yeah, something. And the reason I Really want to do that is because you know how time consuming it's going to be yeah let's get that knocked out and then we can get to like the upper shelf stuff which is going to go i feel like a lot faster yep but then we've got to come over here and do this crossing where we're going to have the floating steps yep that's going to put the brakes on i think pretty hard and hopefully we're at the point where we can just kind of split up with the two crews let these guys keep rocking you and i can mess around with the crossing here and yep. really take our time because there's going to be a lot of detail work to make that happen yeah well this will be fun yeah this is actually going to be fun this is why we like doing stuff getting creative and exactly like we all that bridge is going to we kicked around a couple ideas yeah. and I kept coming back to the floating bridge idea because it's what we did in the sandbox yep. studio and I really like the way that turned out so I think this is a perfect spot for yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Let's get at it.
part of day five, we have got the threat of some rain moving in, right? <laughs> I was thinking today, like today is gonna set probably the pace for the rest of the job. Like yes. what we get done today is gonna say how hard we're working tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So today is a big day. I am, however, though, extremely happy with aesthetically how things turned out yesterday. It looks so good down here. It does look good. Now we've got a major part of the pond, which is finishing up this giant waterfall, right? If we can get this 80% done today, I'm not saying finish work, but if we can get all our rock work set in here, and that's gonna be a major leap towards actually hitting our goal of getting done by next week, right? We should be able to get this. Like we, based off of what we got finished yesterday, I think we can handle this. Ralph's doing great over on the other side of the pond. He's got some big responsibilities over there. Yeah. With <laughs> setting some key rocks that are gonna sit next to our bridges and stuff. Some stuff over here by the patio that's a little tricky, but I know he's gonna kill that. This area though is gonna look amazing. That's the, like what Brian just mentioned. We're able to split into two teams now, which is gonna give us our production. We have to get moving here. There is well over 100 tons of stone left to set. Oh, easy, easy. Easy 100 tons, so that's a lot of rock. And then from there, it's all that finished work, but we can't get there until we get here. So let's look at what has to happen with this waterfall. So this is a section we worked on yesterday. It's so happy with the way this turned out. One of the key things we always talk about is never stacking rock on top of each other. Mother nature just doesn't do this. So we like to layer this stuff back. If you notice, even the rock I'm standing on now, the whole purpose of this rock was to give us height so this rock could get up high enough. What I didn't want to do is take a rock like this and then put another small rock on top of it to get to our water level. So we'll put in rocks like this, come back in, and we fill with this base material back behind it all. This gives us tons of stability. So when we're dropping these things on, we know that they're not gonna shift or move or anything. So you're gonna notice us doing that everywhere. We love to layer this stuff back. One of the tricks, you know, just with excavation is you came in, you dug the whole thing down four feet deep in this area, knowing that we would probably create shelves as we worked up. If you tried to dig in the shelves first, you're very married to whatever you've excavated. This gives us a lot more creative freedom, but uses a ton of gravel. <laughs> Luckily, gravel is a little bit more cost effective than stones though, so we can do that. So now we're gonna do the same thing back over here on the waterfalls. So if you look at this area here, we have a four foot, every bit of four feet right here, maybe a little bit taller. We need like a five foot rock, which I don't believe even exists out here. So what we'll do is we'll come down a little lower, maybe way out here, backfill with some gravel behind that, get us up another foot or so, because we have some four foot boulders. This will end up kind of framing out, not just the way this water comes into here, but also framing out where our intake bay is gonna go that way. As we come into here, this is a much more manageable height rock that we can get in here. If we didn't have that, we could do the same thing. We come down low, back to the gravel, and get up a little higher. Now what I love about this section here, and this was done intentionally, this big guy sticks above the water by about that much. I think water comes someplace up right in here, which is gonna look really cool. This rock is kind of peaking above the water, but we wanted that to happen. So as water comes out of this waterfall, that rock really helps push that water this way and back into our intake bay. What we don't want to have happening is the water that comes from our stream and our jets and everything over there and the water that comes this way collide and then confuse the acorns and the leaves and everything on where to go. This really helps direct that water back into our filter and intake bay. You know, and honestly, there's really nothing worse than a confused acorn. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're gonna get rocking on this waterfall. I can't wait to set these big boulders. It's gonna look fantastic especially when it all gets tied into what we've done already. And that's the important thing is coming from the bottom of the pond up to meet that, if we just did a bunch of small rocks down here, it would look contrived and ridiculous because you're marrying up this gorgeous big boulder waterfall into a bunch of small rocks and that just wouldn't look right. So we're tying in some key large boulders on our way up to meet what we've already done is extremely important. All right guys, so what we've got going on right here is the floor of the pond. So what we wanted to do is break up. It started kind of getting like a channel of sorts. So we did some rock work to just block it off. Now that created a higher shelf, so we backfilled it. And we're doing this cobbly type of work. So they're just broken stones. And then we're gonna fill these joints with uh, pond river rock. You know, the same rock that goes on the floor. And then as it tapers out this way, we'll get fatter and fatter joints until it just disappears and bleeds into these bigger boulders.
we've got an overlap from our waterfall coming over our pond liner. They kind of go like this, right? Never like this. But before we do that, we've got to get all this cleaned up back in here. So we had a bunch of spoils that kind of fell down in there. We don't want to see any of those rocks. We don't see any roots, anything that could possibly puncture the liner. Once we get that clean, then we're going to come in here, set our weir height. Our weir is the height that sets our water level for the waterfall coming into the pond. So we want this nice and level and flat. So you can see kind of some of these little dips over here to my left, your guys right. See how I do that? I appease the, my fans. <laughs> We're gonna come over here, we wanna flatten all this off. These little dips can actually mean challenges or problems even in the future. Sometimes that liner can dips down too low below our water level in the pond. This could create a leak. So we wanna make sure all of this is a minimum of six to eight inches high. Here we're actually looking for about 12 inches higher than the water level of our pond. So we'll come in here, we'll double check this, and then we'll uh, do our overlap, backfill with gravel, and then we'll start building the rest of this waterfall. the day five here and the rain is moving in it is coming down in buckets but luckily we were able to get the tarps out and cover a good majority of the area up there that's where our constructed wetland filter is going we've got a big pile of spoils up there that we want to try and keep dry and we were able to cover where our whole intake is going to be so we're hoping that's salvaged enough that we can keep pushing forward they're not calling for storms tomorrow but it might get heavy the rest of the tonight and it's going to definitely get wet out here and this place gets instantly greasy when it gets wet this clay that's here i've never seen anything like it it just sticks to your feet in like your feet are three times the size looks like snowshoes so tomorrow's gonna be a fun day see you then mm -hmm.